Well, good day everyone. We're back down the creek. I'm gonna be starting back in around this hole that I first did in the second last trommeling video. But first, a little bit of educational stuff for you. I'm sure that a lot of you have changed the pull cord on a small engine before. But for those of you that haven't, tune in and we'll do it right now. For those of you that have, I'll leave a little thingo right here to say where you can skip to. So, first things first, 10 mil socket with a little extension bit. Let's drop off these three bolts. Pull out our old little hunk of junk cord. Yeah. Let's take it out of the handle here. And we'll just feed this through backwards. Feed him back through in reverse. Let's wind him on. So now it's on, but we've got no spring tension. So all that we got to do is wind it back a little bit so it's got a little bit of spring tension, probably a bit too much, not enough, all right, so we'll go to there, back through the hole. back through our little T-handle. Need to get every millimeter out of it that we can. We're good to go. Smack it back on. That's it. Pull cord repair in the bush in 90 seconds. <laughs> and away we go. It's just me setting the water speed. So you notice I got a nice big stainless steel screen on the end of the intake now with tiny little holes in it. So that'll prevent little bits of sand and rock and sticks and leaves and stuff from getting sucked up and blocking up the spray bar. A lot of that doesn't look like much chop. But what we'll do is we'll just um, take a pan. Just to be certain because I'm gonna to have to move it anyway, so if it's got any gold in it whatsoever, I might as well put it in a bucket and throw it through that thing. Mm, yeah, one tiny, tiny little smackle. So what we'll do is we'll scrape all that light stuff off the top, and we'll get to the harder stuff underneath, and then start working that. Couple of nice little flakes there. You guys should be able to see those on camera. And half a dozen little fine bits around it as well. 
All right, that's enough. I'm getting into it. I'm excited. Less mucking around, more running buckets. Let's go, Morgan. Come on. Left the big rock in the middle there, so you'd know roughly where we're up to, but pretty much like that. And I've scalloped out all up in there. Looking really nice in there too. I'm liking that. You can see that lighter coloured middle layer again, below those large bouldery bits. And over on this side it turns into a bit of a smaller wash. But it's, um, you can see the colour of it there. Really pebbly and really rusty coloured, which I like. So I'll have to do a test pan out of that as well. Still got that darker, rustier stuff on the top here. Not expecting much out of that, but we'll um, we'll just run it anyway because it's right there. So let's have a look in the box. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of fine gold. They aren't nugs, but here's a couple of nice little chunkies, little pickers. They're yeah, alright. They were just hidden up the top there. Grappy's gold mines. Oh, she's about to get nasty. Batten down the hatches. Come on, Morgan, quick! Run, mate! What a good boy, sitting for the camera. So I was getting a bit nervous about that overhanging bank, so I thought I'd just come along to the left here and have a go in there. It's still got some pretty similar nice looking layers, but I tried to find that middle lighter coloured one with the pan, and I did two pans and they didn't really have a hell of a lot in them, so maybe that nice rich white layer doesn't extend this far to the left. Anyway, there's a lot of fine tailings. I'm filling in this whole washout, which is nice. It'll look a lot neater. Not a huge amount of gold, but lots of fine stuff, so I'll take it. Back into it again. So this is where we did last time, that area. Got a hundred out of there. And not super happy with the gold that I've seen this far. So I thought, well, that's all right, you get that. But I'll do a few test pans this morning, see if I can sort of isolate a bit of a hot zone. I took a pan of some of the nice clay looking material that was just sitting here that, you know, just accumulated in the bottom. Yeah, a few colors. I've got a little bit out of this bedrock here. Or well, what was bedrock is now decomposing clay. Yeah, a few colours as well. Midway up, a couple of little bits. Um, getting a little bit better, I thought. And then I chipped one out of this area here. So it's sort of like a completely different layer where it goes from the darker stuff to a bit of a lighter coloured stuff. It's a little bit more clay. And my goodness, was there some nice gold in it. Can you see that from there? What about now? Or now. Ooh. I'll get the right light angle here. Have a look at the bloody gold that was in it. What? Are you kidding? Beautiful chunky bits. So one particularly nice one there. And then the rest of them are also quite chunkyish and coarse. 
beautiful looking. What a great pan to start the morning off. So, obviously it's that sort of lighter coloured clay layer in there that has the better gold, at least in this particular spot. So I should um, do a couple more pans out of up in there and see what comes out as well. I just chipped out a pan there and same result again. Stunning gold. Let's just... Like how beautiful is that? All nice chunky stuff once again. If the ground stayed like that the entire time I was here, I'd be having $500 days. Now, it won't stay like that, but at least I know that I've got a particular lay here that I should be paying a bit more attention to. I'm still going to take what's above and what's below. When I get down to the clayey bedrock, I'm going to stop. It's actually a, a lot harder to run through the machine, so it takes a bit longer to wash it. Um, I'll dig a little bit of that clayey bedrock up every once in a while. I'll test it. If it's any good, I'll dig that particular bit out. Um, if it's no good, then I'll just leave it exposed, and at the end I'll run over it with the detector. Well, unfortunately, there's only so far that electrical tape will get you. This is what they call a spider element. So, thankfully, we're in Australia, and there's every chance that we'll be able to find a spider hole here somewhere. Hmm. Well, there's a spider hole. No. Where are they? Ah! Joking. Beautiful. Couldn't do that in any other country, let me tell you. And we're good to go. Just like that. midway through running the second run here. Have a go at this pan that Artie's just got. Oh, what? You're kidding me. That's not a little pan, eh? That's a big pan. Pretty good. Hey, out up over here. Well, Katie got some nice pans recently. Artie's flogging her. <laughs> Real good pan. That's a wrap on another trip. And have a go at all of our tailings. So this is where I was originally digging on the first trip in this spot. I've managed to fill most of that back in. So I just smooth it all out and neaten it up as well. Kick a few of these rocks back into that hole as well and level out a bit of that. And um, it'll look a lot nicer in here, which should be good. Because this is pretty much, as you'd probably remember from the previous video, just a big gaping long trench through here where it had torn through in a flood. So, yeah. We finished up over in here with 
quite a nice large area. Still, I found that the best material was that gray layer through there. It was pretty strange that um, it was quite patchy still, like it wasn't perfect gold right the way through it. You know, you might get 20 pieces there and then nothing right there and then 30 right there. <laughs> but I know we've got a, a lot more to look forward to right the way along this bank because the best pan that we had yesterday was Artie's pan that he did, which was out of that little spot there. And then all the way back over this way still, we've got where Katie was panning and got some beautiful gold out of there. Artie also did some panning below it, got some really nice stuff. So still heaps and heaps of bank here to work, which is great. Um, so we'll just keep plodding along with it every once in a while. So we managed 400 buckets this time, which is the equivalent to eight metric tons. Um, I weighed some of the buckets and they were coming in at an average of 21.5 kilograms of material in each bucket. So that's a pretty nice round number. We can definitely say that um, we did the eight tons. So yeah, next time I'll try and do 500 buckets, which is 10 tons. And we'll see what comes out of that. Anyway, I'll start packing up. We'll get out of here today and then um, do the clean up as soon as we get home, see what we got. Super excited to see that. Didn't get any pieces with the SDC, unfortunately, um, but we did end up with a couple of little chunky bits in the end there that must have come out of this area here somewhere. So all in all, another fantastic trip.
and not a bad result at all for four days of playing around down the creek. 4.4 grams from eight metric tons is around about 0.55 grams per ton, which works out to be 0.011 grams to the bucket and 94 cents to the bucket. So a little bit lower than what we got last time. Previously, we got approximately $1.27 to the bucket. So a little bit lower, but still really happy with that. It only um, takes me around about four or five hours of playing around to do the 100 buckets. In that time, I use approximately four litres of fuel between the trommel motor and the water pump. So it only cost me about $7 to head out there and make, you know, $94. So all in all, it's great fun. It's good exercise. Love it. So shortly we'll be back hard rock mining. This will be the last alluvial one for a little while and we'll head back out hard rock mining. I've made some mad modifications to the crushing plant. I'm very excited to try them out. So hopefully we can find some nice ore to crush up and melt up into a nice button. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Cheers.